Hey there everybody, Esso here, and I apologize in advance for the um, lack of quality in this video. It's unscripted, so if you hear a lot of pauses or, you know, I correct myself a couple times and I say, I say um a lot between my thoughts because as sort of a placeholder for uh, my actual thoughts, then yeah, I that's that's gonna come anytime I do an unscripted rant but uh, this is important and I need to get this out as quickly as possible and it also doesn't necessarily warrant a full essay or even a news video so as I'm sure a lot of you have seen recently yesterday uh, I uploaded a video on the Back Alley Philosophy channel, in tide, uh, which was about the Dayton shooting and the El Paso shooting, along with uh, what I, well, it was Filthy Heretic's video, but I, I wrote it with him, and uh, I was telling him about m this observation, but essentially, um, I've begun to notice, and he has too, apparently, well, whatever, that um, the narrative in the media around mass shootings is changing. That uh, the state has largely achieved its goal in regards to the legal state of gun control in relation to the socio-political uh, order that's been established, and there's no revolting in the street. Um, nobody really seems to care but what does continue to challenge their interests and what does threaten them is the existence of decentralization the internet uh, projects such as FOSCAD and 3D printing guns and the other ways in which people could make homemade weapons that is a continuing threat for the state, and that actually is something that very much does concern them. And that's not even the most threatening part of decentralization. You know, there's also what's going on with cryptocurrency, the decentralization of finance, which make it impossible for the state to collect revenue and um, essentially ensure that transactions have to occur on a peer-to-peer -peer basis. It's, uh, basically, that's the biggest threat for them right now, and I think they've recognized it. So you'll notice with a lot of these recent shootings that very little focus is actually put on, um, the shooting or, you know, any sort of, you know, gun control woo like it would have been even a year ago. And instead, uh, they're quick to start scapegoating uh, decentralized online platforms and message boards like 8chan or 4chan specifically. So in the description of this video, uh, Filthy Heretic and I sourced a article posted on the Federalist Papers, which was just verbatim a uh, reposting of the El Paso shooter's entire manifesto. And uh, because of that, our channel, our entire channel, got a community guideline strike because apparently, uh, yeah, you can't link certain content in the description of uh, videos. Now, considering that nothing about this was even remotely risque or uh, it, it was literally just the Federalist Papers. Um, yeah, our, our video, our link got hidden, and uh, our channel got a community guideline strike, but the bullshit doesn't end there. Uh, apparently with, you know, th since this is the only community guideline strike active on our channel right now, with that, you think it would just be res restricted monetization, um, and, and all, all of that. Well, apparently YouTube I don't know if this is something they're doing for every channel. I have never seen this done to anyone else's channel, so it's a first for me at the very least. But YouTube has made it so I cannot upload videos for the next week, and I also can't make community posts for the next week. So this appears to be a very deliberate attempt to gag my channel so that I can't interact with my viewers. 
And, uh, yeah, I've noticed that since this has happened, our channel has lost, like, five subscribers, hasn't really, hasn't had a net gain, and that's another thing, a lot of people have been, uh, telling me that, uh, YouTube is automatically unsubscribing them from this channel, so, YouTube probably did that to some more people. So, I personally was very skeptical as to whether or not YouTube would actually go forward in, you know, essentially becoming the next Twitter or Facebook in the sense of not allowing people, like, just straight up making it impossible for people to post the content they want. Because like what's happened with Facebook and Twitter, all that's done is caused those pla Facebook is a ghost town. I mean, there's barely anybody on Facebook nowadays. It's, it's very, like, within the next year or two, Facebook would just be the next MySpace pretty blatantly. And Twitter is essentially just new Tumblr. It's where all the people from Tumblr went after Tumblr started shutting down the porn blogs. But, yeah, all the actual, like, the only people on there are communists at this point. Everybody who is not a Marxist or some sort of identi- some sort other sort of identitarian got banned from the platform like a year ago. So I was very uh, skeptical as to whether or not YouTube was going to do the same thing because the thing with these um, tech companies is that they are very much aware of the Streisand effect and they're very much aware of the fact that uh, if they shut people down, not only are those people going to become more popular, but um, at this point, and another thing that they're aware of is that uh, people are going to leave if their stability on the platform can't be maintained, if it becomes too difficult for them to maintain a stable presence and they, it becomes too risky for them to function, then nobody is going to use YouTube, mainly because nobody is going to be posting any content on YouTube. So, um, I, I'm pretty sure, and since, since YouTube is essentially, like, the last platform which there aren't people, you know, leaving on mass because it hasn't gotten to that point yet. I figured YouTube might have been, you know, trying to uh, paradoxically balance it out, you know, with their shadow banning policy, but I mean, no, they're they're uh, giving people community guideline strikes for linking articles. So I fucking, I'm sort of doubting my future on the platform as well as, you know, everyone else's. Um, for the near future. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know how much longer, um, you know, people are going to really be able to sit around and take it anymore. Uh, not, none of the real competitors are actually, you know, competitors. They say that they're competitors, but a lot of them, you know, I, I made a whole video about Gab and, uh, the way that uh, Dissenter was structured. Pretty obvious honeypot. But um, a lot of these social media competitors, like BitChute, like, they don't do anything to set themselves apart or do anything to appeal to um, an actual audience and get them away from YouTube. What they do is they essentially, the people who, assuming that they're doing this in jest, when they're making their platform, they seem to have the idea in mind that, uh, and in, and this is made openly clear with how they advertise these, plat these platforms, that, oh, well, this is a, this is supposed to be an alternative to YouTube or whatever site that, uh, we're creating this to try and undermine, and, uh, yeah, we shouldn't do anything in terms of quality, like, you know, our upload speeds are going to be shit, our loading speeds are going to be even worse, like 2010 YouTube in the case of BitChute, our layout's going to be awful, we're going to take no, no consideration into how our layout looks, and our entire appeal is going to just be, well, it's not YouTube. And that'll never end up actually defeating YouTube. That at all that might do at most is attract people like Computing Forever or Sticks Hex and Hammer, who are like controlled opposition personalities, and um, well, 
I don't know specifically about sticks or, or computing forever whether or not they are actually state shills. They push a lot of state shill narratives in their videos, but um, yeah, it's going to be people like them seeking an alternative, and that's you know another reason why I'm incredibly skeptical about a lot of these platforms is because the only people that they're actually a attempting to appeal to are uh, people who are dissenting you know against YouTube Twitter Facebook and are you know conscious and attempting to politically organize so part of me wonders as to whether or not these sort of social be these competitors quote-unquote aren't set up deliberately with the intent of essentially just collecting information on these various groups Basically, the only reason I haven't left YouTube yet is for FNAT. Um, I'm trying to stick around so that, you know, I can hold out until this comes out. And I can advertise to... I can use my platform on YouTube to advertise this. And aside from that, you know, it also... Considering that YouTube is the uh, current quote-unquote mainstream platform... Uh, having a presence on it in order to at least reach some people would be nice despite you know how heavily my videos are being censored in the algorithms despite YouTube's clear attempts to gag my channel and despite you know you it looking like YouTube is just going to become increasingly hostile over the next few months but uh, yeah so all I have to say in conclusion is that uh, we definitely need decentralization now more than ever. And I've been doing my part, but it would be great if, you know, a lot of people could um, start organizing with their own resources and not even necessarily the FNET project. I mean, all help would be appreciated, but, you know, if they have, the, if you guys have your own ideas, um, get together a group of, you know, 10, 20 people, uh, create a white paper, uh, pull together, you know, maybe a hundred dollars and use that to, you know, throw out some ideas and contribute to your project, you'd have that done pretty quickly. Um, as for, uh, but, but yeah, uh, don't be concerned about, you know, the lack of content being uploaded to our channel. We'll be back in a week, and given that I'm really pissed off at YouTube, I haven't really thought of a direction to go, but I am very much considering uh, returning with an essay uh, essentially relating to a lot of the uh, points that I've sort of rattled off here. Anyway, uh, thank you to everyone who mirrored this video. And I will uh, go ahead and post a link to my Discord server. I'll hand it to some of the people that I've asked to mirror this in hopes that they put it in the description. And I will see you guys when I can talk again.